come from a very practical Midwestern family. I never considered being a musician. <laughs> Nor was I told as a little kid that I was particularly special as a musician. It wasn't until after I had been going to China for three years, um, I started asking the question of myself, but also my Chinese friends would ask me, what is it about American culture? Like, what, what is American culture? And in China, it's so ancient and deep and rich. I mean, it's thousands of years of culture that you can still see in present day. Whereas America, other than maybe our indigenous peoples, the, the, the culture of modern America is so young. And so I, I didn't know how to give them something that quite compared culturally to the treasure that is Chinese history and culture. Until. <laughs> the sound of the banjo and it was just this very trance-like rhythmic grooving thing and it just sounded ancient and I thought now if this is American and it's ancient in some way wouldn't that be something I could share with my friends in China that would somehow compare to the beautiful deep rich old things they have there so I went on about a banjo and I started singing It just drew me in, the sound. And as I studied the banjo, I learned that it came from Africa and became American. Just like almost everyone who's come to America. They come here one thing and they become American. And I thought, this is surely an instrument that carries the story of America. And as soon as I started playing the banjo, I saw the power of music to make people feel things for their hearts to open, rather than thinking with their minds. And then I realized that if I learned Chinese songs and played them on the banjo for audiences here in America, it made people think about China in a new way. I started a music uh, decided by my parents when I was about five years old. Uh, they told me later when I was an adult that uh, they saw music talent in me when I was quite young, like two or three. And then I went to China Conservatory of Music so three years after high school. And at that time, I started to wonder, that's when Beijing was, like whole China was very, a lot of reforms, a lot of uh, uh, interactions with international uh, communities and countries and schools. That drove me to eventually uh, <laughs> took exams to go to college in, in the United States. Um, and then I started, uh, uh, the second half of my college education was from the States, and then I went to graduate school for further music. That's when I started Experimenting. No one tells you, oh, stop messing around. Because you're encouraged to explore places and your professors encourage you to let go of the burden from your training. Just, just just go for it. Whatever you think, even bashing the table or boil a tea, hot like a teacup and then just mic the sound or something. Just to jump out of box and just be the wildest you you can be. The 
one lesson I had with one of my professors who has become my best friend and mentor in my life. After he listened to all the music I had composed on the recording, he said, wow, Faye, I hear a lot of amazing, wonderful craft, but I don't hear Faye. And that, after that, after that lesson, after that, that, that day, I had to not go to school for a week because I was put in a reality check. I had devoted my life to be for music and I felt I wasted my whole life. I did some serious thinking. Well, I went to like pretty like, straight depression for, for a whole week because just I had a doubt about even what's the meaning, even continuing living. <laughs> I wasted my whole life. I need to change and do something else. It's too late. And then I came out, it's like, okay, I'm gonna just do my best. I have I'm in front of me is a cliff. I'm gonna jump. So I took the, the jump. Like a overnight enlightenment. I started to play like in a silly way or however the way that I was hearing my head or feeling my heart or not feeling my heart. After that, I found my voice. A good friend of mine wrote me about Faye. He said, you've just got to meet this woman, Faye. She plays the Gujang. She lives in Colorado. The next time you're out here, you've got to meet her. I don't mean to sound crass or coarse or whatever the word is, but uh, a lot of people say, you got to meet my Chinese friend. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, thanks. Yeah, I'd love to. Sure. But it doesn't usually end up being magical. You know, it's more like, hey, I'm really glad to meet you. We, you know, I love Chinese culture and sort of like, <laughs> we speak some Chinese and then everybody goes off and does their thing. And so I, I emailed her and said, hey, do you want to come play at a little house concert we're doing at a little school up in the mountains? And she said, sure. And, uh, she came up and we performed together and that just, right away, it was clear that there could be a real friendship there. And sure enough, over the years, we, our lives were just very parallel. Well, Abby was going to China touring a lot. That's why she sings Chinese beautifully. And she learned a lot of folk music while she was there. And I was just completely in love with what's over here, jazz, rock, folk, electronic. Avant-garde. We stayed in touch, and I started visiting her in uh, China and New York City, yeah. and um, and then she moved to Nashville, Tennessee, partly so we could be close to each other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as Faye and I started playing together, it became really apparent that there's a sisterhood that we could represent, a multicultural sisterhood to to kids. To us, it feels like. Um, it creates early in someone's life the permission to think of other people and their cultures as our family and as a part of our voice and uh, to share that with young generations because they're going to grow up with the images of, of Faye and I playing together at some point in the back of their minds, you know, it can come to them. So that's what we're doing right now. We're actively forming a nonprofit. This last year, we were lucky enough to find a grant writer who found us uh, funding, and we got a city grant from Nashville Arts Council to do these shows, these school shows, for a year. Well, so a collaboration with Faye wasn't obvious that it would work. I'll say that. Like when we first met, we certainly could share each other's languages and uh, spoken, you know, vernacular. But um, when it came to our musical interests, maybe when we first met, it wasn't the moment in time that we needed to combine forces. It took eight or nine years for us to find that right moment to come together. She was exploring improvisation, her own voice. But when Faye started going back to China and becoming reinvigorated by her own culture and how that feeds her voice, it became this moment where 
we were both excited about the same things. Our own voices, our own cultures, and each other's cultures. Now I went back to China and realizing the things that I missed about America. And when I was in America, the things that I missed about China. And without spending really good quantity of time, uh, I would not be able to appreciate both sides. And knowing there's very complicated problems on both sides, huge countries, large population, lots of diversity, lots of the biggest economies. But now I, I see myself, I've, I've grown in a way that I feel much more content and clear and knowing wherever you, you move to, there's gonna be problems that you won't like. And so now you're knowing myself that, that I'm always gonna complain about something. So regardless of what that thing or wherever that place is, so I feel, very content and um, appreciative of the Chinese uh, culture, my root, and uh, and the new voice, the new me from America. Um, I often now um, say that um, China gave me an identity, also the training and the discipline that the Chinese culture gave me. But after coming to America, America helped me find my voice. So. Uh, that's really, uh, I think, both the cultures. I, I, I greatly, dearly appreciate that I feel both. I feel very Chinese and feel mer very American. <laughs> I've gotten to collaborate with a lot of wonderful musicians as I've toured all around China. I've had the chance to go wide, all over China, playing with all kinds of musicians, but the chance to sit right here in my home and go deep into that well of friendship, culture, and the intimate place of creation with another Chinese artist has been absolutely phenomenal. It's really, really, really special. <laughs>